The Metroids are the titular creatures from one of Nintendo's most loved franchises. In the games, these creatures were created by the super advanced species of alien bird people, the Chozo. The Metroids were created to eradicate the deadly X parasite on the planet SR388. However, the Chozo later lost control of the Metroids, something which contributed to the downfall of the Chozo civilization. A group of space pirates later got their hands on some Metroids and planned to use them as a biological weapon and spread them across numerous planets, endangering all life they encountered. The parasitic Metroids would latch on to any organism they found and suck out the life energy, leaving the prey cold and dead. The Metroids' insatiable thirst for life energy combined with their resistance to numerous weapons, makes the Metroids a serious threat to all life on any planet that they infest. So it's a good thing that the Metroids aren't real, right? They don't actually exist, do they? Well, I'm here to tell you that actually, they kind of do, and they are right here on Earth. And now, there's a lot of things you could say about the Tomorrowcade, but it's definitely not a clickbait channel. I promised to show you a real world Metroid, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So without further ado, here it is! This is the Bacteriophage Metroid. Should you be scared of it? Well, only if you're a bacterium. This tiny virus is only around 208 nanometers long. To put that into perspective, if you line them up end to end, you could fit 149,000 of them along the edge of a Nintendo Switch cartridge. A bacteriophage is a kind of virus which, admittedly, does look quite alien with its D20 dice on a stick like appearance. These viruses only infect bacteria where they latch onto the outside of the bacterial cells. and then inject their DNA into the host cell. The DNA of lytic bacteriophages will then replicate and create more viruses until the host cell bursts. The new viruses will then drift about until they happen across their next victim. And then the cycle repeats over and over again. Bacteriophages are not at all rare there's loads of them. In fact, it's estimated that on planet Earth, there's around one nonillion of them. That's one with 30 zeros. Or one million, 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 million. That's around 100 quintillion times the human population. The Metroid bacteriophage infects cells of the genus Staphylococcus, including the beautifully named Staphylococcus aureus, which never stops being fun to say. These small round cells form little clumps and look a bit like a bunch of grapes. Now, I don't mean to freak anyone out, but you've probably got these all over you. Loads of them. That's because bacteria of the genus Staphylococcus make up a part of the natural flora of human skin. The natural flora being a little ecosystem made up of loads of different microorganisms that you have on all parts of your body. You have it on your skin, you have it in your digestive tract, and you even have it in your genitals. There are other parts of your body where no microorganisms should be living, such as your blood, cerebral spinal fluid, or your upper urinary tract. Now don't feel gross or dirty about being covered in bacteria, because they're not actually doing you any harm. In fact, there's plenty of evidence to suggest they might actually be doing good and help fight off bad bacteria and stop them from colonizing your body. And normally, Staphylococcus aureus is just like that. It just hangs around on your skin, just minding its own business, not doing any harm at all. 
but it can be a nasty pathogen, especially if it gets into a part of the body where it shouldn't, such as the bloodstream where it can cause a nasty case of septicemia that could even be life-threatening. But no need to worry about bacterial infections in this day and age, because we have antibiotics, right? Those wonderful drugs that can just cure anything. Right? In 1928, the Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming discovered the world's first antibiotic, penicillin, a drug that was found to be incredibly effective at treating staphylococcus and streptococcus infections. This world-changing discovery led to the development of numerous other antibiotics to try and treat as many different bacterial diseases as possible. Antibiotics have been extremely effective at treating bacterial infections. However, they have been seen as a kind of magic cure-all medicine by some doctors that has resulted in them being prescribed for a plethora of ailments that aren't even bacterial in origin, such as the common cold, which as we all know, is caused by a virus and antibiotics only work on bacteria. Although there are some other diseases that are caused by microorganisms such as protocytes which can also be treated by using certain antibiotics, but let's not get into that right now. And this global clinical misuse of antibiotics has led to millions of cases of unnecessary usage. And even if the patient taking the antibiotics doesn't actually have a bacterial infection, it doesn't mean that the antibiotics aren't doing anything. You know, remember those ecosystems of microorganisms I was talking about earlier? The bacterial flora that you have in numerous parts of your body? Well, those bacteria can still be affected by the drugs, even though they're not doing any harm. And as those drugs kill off millions and millions of innocent bacterial cells, this is where Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection comes in. You see, eventually one of those cells is going to mutate and gain a resistance to this drug that's causing all their friends and family to get obliterated. And then that single cell will replicate over and over and over again until there's an entire population of cells that are resistant to that antibiotic. And if this happens to a bacterium like the aforementioned Staphylococcus aureus, then it could be a serious problem. Penicillin first came out on the market in 1941. Guess what year the first resistant strain of Staphylococcus aureus was identified? Go on, I'll just give you a bit to say an answer. So what are you thinking? Maybe early 2000s, 1980s? Well, it was actually 1942, one year after penicillin was released to the market. Penicillin isn't the only antibiotic that Staphylococcus aureus has become resistant to. There are strains out there that are resistant to numerous different types of antibiotics. These strains are known as methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or more commonly known as MRSA. The media will often call MRSA the superbug due to its resilience to treatment. MRSA is a serious problem, especially in hospitals, care homes and prisons, where it can spread easily and an infection can easily be fatal. And because antibiotics don't seem to be working, looks like we're going to need a new type of treatment to sort this one out. Due to the increasing rate that bacteria are becoming resistant to antibiotics, the development of new antibiotics is slowing down considerably. This is a battle that seems the bacteria are winning. We just can't keep up. We're going to need an alternative. Is there anything else we could do? Well, thankfully, there is. Enter phage therapy. Phage therapy is the name given to the concept of using bacteriophage viruses to treat bacterial disease. In fact, it was first used to treat an infection of Shigella dysenteriae way back in 1919. Research into phage therapy was going quite well in the early 20th century, right up until the conventional antibiotic was discovered at which point it wasn't really seen as needed anymore because we'd already solved that problem with antibiotics, so we don't need these bacteriophage things then do we? And as a result, research into phage therapy ended, well, on this side of the Iron Curtain at least, over in the Soviet Union, research continued on for quite some time. Although unfortunately, due to how things were at the time, much of this work was never translated or released outside of the Soviet Union. 
In recent years, there has been a renewed interest in phage therapy due to our desperate need for an alternative to antibiotics. We are still a good few years away from phage therapy hitting the market and a lot more research is needed, but we do have some very promising results so far. Bacteriophages are usually highly specific and will only infect a single bacterial species, and in some cases only infect certain strains of a certain species. So this means that the bacteriophages won't attack the bacteria that's not causing the problem. <coughs> so, what phages can be used to treat, say, a case of Staphylococcus aureus infection? Well, there has been a group of phages known as the cluster C1 phages that have been identified as potential candidates for clinical use. And this group includes the Metroid bacteriophage. So there you go. The namesake of one of video games most deadly creatures might actually go on to save millions of lives and help in the battle against MRSA in the future. So you might be thinking, is this virus actually named after the video games or is it just a coincidence? So to answer this, I got in contact with Suzanne Pfeiffer of Arizona State University, who is the head of the lab that discovered the Metroid virus. And I asked her if the virus is actually named after the video games. And this is what she said. My student Avery, also a talented artist, isolated this particular bacteriophage. Here is why she chose the name Metroid. The name came from the video game series Metroid. Since the game is set in space and I just really like it, I wanted to name it after Ripley from Alien, but that was taken. And Metroid was influenced by Alien, so it worked out. Some other interesting phase names include Arcanine, Gengar, Solosis, Gex, Goku, Bowser, Spongebob, Chewbacca, Plumbus, Cubert, Shia LaBeouf, Big Chungus and Absolute Mad Lad. And if you're wondering if there's any rules about what you can name phages, there is a list of them on the phage database website. And the number one rule is that you can't name them after Nicolas Cage. Sorry Nick, no phages for you. Although there is one called Kickerless Nage. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please remember to share, like, subscribe and all the rest if you enjoyed this video. A huge thank you to Suzanne Pfeiffer and her lab for their work into the Metroid bacteriophage and also for helping answer some of my questions and helping out with this video. In the description below I've put links to the Pfeiffer lab so you can read more about the Metroid bacteriophage and the other amazing work that they do there. I've also put a link to the paper that was recently published if you'd like to give that a read for yourself. So thank you very much to my Patreon supporters, including Stuart Christopher Brownlee, Magnus Verze, Taito Adol 3, House of the Ted, Eddie and Carl Deacon. Again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, bye!